Hi everyone, welcome to the computation of the total sick time using C loop disk scheduling algorithm. So when we say total sick time, we are referring to the total time taken to locate the disk arm to a specified track where the data is to be read or write. Or it is the total number of track movement of read write head. In C loop disk scheduling algorithm, the disk arm, in spite of going to the end, goes only to the last request to be serviced in front of the head, and then from there goes to the other end's last request. Suppose we are given here our track range, which starts from 0 and ends in 199. The order of request or the request queue contains track numbers 5, 82, 50, 14, 10, 74, 67, and 196. The current position of the read write head is at track number 16 and the current direction is towards end of the disk. So how are we going to compute the total sick time using CLOOP disk scheduling algorithm? So for us to be able to compute the total sick time using CLOOP disk scheduling algorithm, we need first to have a representation of our given data. So we have here our track range which starts from 0 and ends in 199. The current position of the read write head is at track number 16. And the requesting track numbers are track number 5, track number 82, track number 50, track number 14, track number 10, track number 74, track number 67, and track number 196. In CLOOP disk scheduling algorithm, we are going to consider the given current direction, which is towards end of the disk. So from the current position of the head, which is from track number 16, the movement will be towards end of the disk. But then, although the direction is towards the end of the disk, it only goes to the last requesting track. So, from the current position of the head, which is from track number 16, it will move towards track number 50. From track number 50, it will move towards track number 67. From track number 67, it will move towards track number 74. From track number 74, it will move towards track number 82. From track number 82, it will move towards track number 196. It will not move towards track number 199 because there is no request coming from track number 199. After reaching the last requesting track, it reverses its direction. Okay? So from track number 196, which is our last requesting track, okay, it will move towards the last requesting track in the opposite direction without serving any request. So from track number 196, it will move towards track number 5. So after reaching the last requesting track in the opposite direction, it will continue serving other requests. So, from track number 5, it will move towards track number 10. From track number 10, it will move towards track number 14. So, let us now compute the total sick time. So, we are going to start from the movement of the first direction of the head. Okay? This is the first direction of the head. Starting from... The current position of the read right head, which is from track number 16 up to track number 196. And the movement of the head in this direction is equivalent to 
196 minus 16. And then we add the movement of the next direction of the head, which is this one. So from track number 196, okay, going to track number 5. And the movement of the head in this direction is equivalent to 196 minus 5. And then we add the movement of the next direction of the head, which is this one. So from track number 5, okay, until track number 14. The movement of the head in this direction is equivalent to 14 minus 5. Total sick time is equivalent to 180 plus 191 plus 9. So 180 comes from subtracting 16 from 196. 191 comes from subtracting 5 from 196. And 9 comes from subtracting 5 from 14. So 180 plus 191 plus 9 is equivalent to 380. So this is our computed total sick time using CLOOP disk scheduling algorithm.